Good morning, everybody, and happy Wednesday, and uh, also happy 1st of July. Wow, can't believe June's already gone through, or gone by so fast, I should say. Um, welcome to your next episode of your weekly Cup of Joe. Hope you've had a great week so far. Uh, this week's question is coming from Jack, and he wants to know, um, does a slight rotator cuff tear heal on its own and the ache that goes with it, will it ever go away? Um, it's a great question, Jack, and uh, kind of a difficult one to answer in such a short period of time, but uh, do my best to try to do, answer this um, thoroughly enough. Um, so without MRI vision or X-ray vision, which I don't have, that definition of slight is a difficult one to decipher. So. Um, if that slight means less than 25% of that tissue, whether it be tendon or muscle is damaged, um, research has shown sometimes in the past that that tissue can heal itself where some good tissue, some new muscle, some new tendon can be laid down and along with some scar tissue and basically help that uh, slight tear kind of heal itself. Um, and basically all things go back to normal over a course of time. Rehab is part of that. Physical therapy is part of that. So, but if you have multiple slight tears in and around the rotator cuff, um, that chance of it healing uh, thoroughly and fully uh, and pain going away is probably not so good. Or if that slight is actually more than 25%, it's maybe closer to 50% of a tear, um, it's a little more difficult for that to heal or fill in or get back to a functional level. So it all depends also on the amount of tissue that was damaged around that rotator cuff maybe also. So there's lots of stuff that goes into it. Um, there is one technique that we do at the clinic that uh, helps um, muscle and tendon strains and tears like that, especially slight tears. It's called Augmentative Soft Tissue Mobilization, or A-S-T-Y-M, or A-STEM. See that there, A-STEM. Um, it's a natural uh, technique of manual therapy, which we go in and basically break down some old scar tissue, fibrotic tissue that might have basically not healed or has laid down and formed and not caused the muscle to heal in and around that injured area. So if you've had molt, that slight uh, rotator cuff tear and have had injured it off and on over the years, um, the scar tissue may have formed up and uh, we'll go in and break that down with using some specific instruments and allow new tissue, new tendon, new muscle tissue, uh, protein matrix to go in there and build up the tissue and then you get the strength in it and stretch it and teach it what you want to do. Tools or instruments um, kind of look like this. There's one, it's kind of a funky ice cream scooper. There's one larger blade and there's one smaller instrument as well. It all depends on the body type um, or the body uh, that uh, part, I should say, that we're working on. Depends on what instruments we use. But we will basically go in and you're going parallel to the muscle fibers. So you're going along those muscles. You're looking for scar tissue. You're looking for fibroid tissue to break it down. Um, it can be very effective uh, to help with that healing process, you know, in conjunction with um, doing some great uh, physical therapy at the same time. So I hope that answers your question, Jack. Um, thank you so much for the, uh, submitting the question. So please, uh, for those individuals, uh, continue to send in questions regarding health, wellness, or physical therapy that you want answered. And uh, we'll continue to do this on a weekly basis. Um, if you think that you might or want to learn more about the ASTEM or think that you might be a candidate for ASTEM, you can definitely call the clinic and the number is below. Also, there's going to be a video link, uh, a couple of video links uh, to the ASTEM, one talking about it and one showing a demonstration. So that's going to be below as well. And uh, you guys can uh, look at those and uh, get some more information regarding that. Our next, or this week's focus, I should say, is going to be that we've been working on that perspective thing, is uh, the negative zone. I'm trying to stay out of the negative zone. So the negative zone is that time of day when the energy sucking 
portion of it. Something bad's happened, something unexpected is happening, and you're deflated and you're going down into that valley um, and you can't concentrate very well. So you need to go into that positive toolbox of yours, that high energy activities to boost yourself back up and get yourself going again. So whether that be exercise, whether that be going outside, meditating, talking with friends, listening to music, a podcast, whatever it may be, um, you have to acknowledge the bad thing that's happened. Um, you have to take a deep breath, reset, tell yourself it's going to be okay. Go into that positive toolbox of yours, pull out whatever method you're going to use and kind of refocus yourself because you got to remember um, staying in that negative zone is bad. There's nothing good that's ever going to come out of it. And no good decisions are ever made when you are uh, in that negative zone. So stay out of that as much as you possibly can. Everybody goes in it during the day, but try to stay out of it for prolonged periods of time. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this week's uh, episode. And we will see you next Wednesday for your weekly cup of joe. Bye.